first, and uh, sure. then you okay. get back to your office to do something that's yeah. productive. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, Mr. Hurley, you guys attend with the attendance policy. All right, we're gonna we're gonna gavel in here and no is this it's on. Okay. Uh, this is the policy committee for Monday, November 9th. Uh, in attendance from the board is Carol Bites, Larry Speed from the administration, um, the superintendent, Jim, and we got uh, uh, Mr. McKnight and Mr. Hurley. Do the pledge please it's for policy okay um okay why don't you uh, get her started we're going to move uh, to attendance um uh, policy 204 from mr Hurley. Uh, guys policy 204 uh it needs to be updated um this is i don't want to wait around for the school boards association um to uh, look at this one because if you notice our current policy states that uh, there's 12 days before a doctor's note is required. Pennsylvania State Code currently has that at 10 days, so we need to update that to be in compliance with the current law. That's all that is. The only other thing I changed in there is just some wording, um, just to get even with practice. Um, they require in the policy it says they need to have excuse blanks. Uh, we don't have excuse blanks anymore, uh, or we certainly don't have a lot of them. Just the parents writing notes in for the kids is all we need. So that's the only, they're very minor changes, but we just need to get everything up with the code and then up with current practice. What section was the excuse blanks in? Uh, it looks like section four, red. And the change in the days, that would be uh, C under excessive acts. Is that, is that school days or just 10 days period? Uh, that is 10 days, 10 school days. 10 school days. Even if they're excused after the 10th day, they have to provide a doctor's Right. Um, that's just state law. Do we need to put school days? Are we splitting hairs here? We know what we're talking about? Yeah, we know, we know what we're talking about. Okay. Any board, dis any discussion? But uh, pretty straightforward, I think. Um, this is what is required by law, so we're just being, uh, staying in, in compliance with us, keeping our policy up to date. Because yep. it will be, uh, will be a while before they get to the 200 series policies i would imagine probably uh, next year yep. if they if they're going on there yes so thank you for bringing <clears throat> it to our attention right. well thank you very much do you uh mr bites mr speed do you have any um objections to moving this forward none okay and we are moving policy 204 uh to first reading mr harris is that right with you that's fine Okay. Um, Mr. McKnight, I was uh, scheduling you for 7 o'clock since yeah. so I figured you'd have some time yeah, back sorry. to get some work That's done. And I can enjoy your work or I can Well, I'll tell you what, you we'll, we'll, well, since we're out of order anyway, why don't you go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll hear your okay. presentation as well, then sure. we'll release you to do something more right. productive. Thank you. So uh, this is something I brought up, I think, started to investigate early summer and had some conversations at the curriculum mm -hmm. level. Our summer school the policy 116 is, is fairly restricted on the, in this time period i think in education you see um, a broader uh, model of using the policy like credit recovery and enrichment in the school year as well as the summer so as you, as you go through our policy you see ours is pretty defined um, and uh, in terms of just really being pointed towards summer school really um, and, and to that end, it feels fairly punitive when you read the document as well. And uh, we are running into a host of issues. Uh, the first piece is that you, to be eligible for summer school, uh, and let's play this through mostly in, the math, in math, for example. We, kids need summer school for other things, math is our biggest issue. Uh, you have to have at least a 40% of the course to be eligible for summer school. Uh, if you don't have a 40%, 
can't even go to summer school. If you don't go to summer school, currently the high school is not allowed um, for double ups. That was that I inherited that that uh, guy minor procedure. So meaning that you can't take two maths in your senior year to catch up for the one you failed, so to speak. Um, therefore, that drives us into what we call super seniors, five-year seniors, and it impacts our four-year cohort graduation rate. Um, and there are a tremendous number of problems doing that, and we're seeing that in the SPP. It's reflected that our graduation rate, our four-year cohort rate, is around 84.5%. That is clearly out of line compared to other districts like us, our size, our level of poverty, um, so to that end, um, I would like to see it more broadly defined so that we can do credit recovery during the school year. Uh, and what does that mean for us? Well, credit recovery is one of the programs we use in the summer is called Compass Learning. So there will be an algebra course in Compass Learning. The student fails Algebra 1, and they, they take Algebra 1 again in the summer. The nice thing about our credit, that many credit recovery models is it will test the student in a pre-test format to give them credit for what percentage of the course they already know. So if they know 50% of the course, they get that, and then the computer becomes prescriptive and only gives them areas they don't know. So you can do that in the summer, or you can allow kids to do that as soon as they're mathematically eliminated, okay, um, during the year. So one, let's say a student has a 10% in the first quarter, they can begin to go into credit recovery right away. So that, that is something I would like you to consider. The other issue would be, um, this is financially, it, it, it has an anti-poverty requiring students to go to summer school and pay for it. Um, and I understand that. And we provide no other option for students to exercise if they can't pay for summer school. You automatically, if you can't pay for summer school, you become a fifth year senior. There's no chance. So in ninth grade, if you fail a math course, you could pay to go to summer school, which is about $300. Um, you're you're going to graduate in five years if you stick it out. So that's the way it is now. Well, that is the way it is now. Wow. Yes. And that and just increases the, the that would just tend to increase the number of people just kids just say the heck with it and they drop out. Yeah, it's exactly what happens. About half of our percentage, that's sixteen percent, eight percent of it is related to math. And we've talked about some of our math challenges before. Um, this is just compounding the problem. Uh, so by looking at the areas that I've redlined, those are the areas I recommend you remove from the policy. Um, and move this piece to three types of course offerings which are basic skills, enrichment and credit recovery courses that give the administration the flexibility to implement them in the best service of the students, wherever they may be. Sometimes it is summer, and sometimes it's during the school year, but it just broadens this uh, policy for us to be able to do that. Um, you can also see in the guideline piece, uh, it's very, very defined. Like it has to be this number of hours, and, and this, at this time of the day, these weeks, and students can't go um, on vacation. And in this day and age with technology, Wherever the computer goes, students can engage credit recovery. It doesn't have to be sitting in a class in the summer. That has a tremendously punitive feel. And we should never be punishing students with, ed with education. It should always be a reward to be able to access education, um, let alone ruining families, um, opportunities, and so forth. It's not just, it doesn't feel right in, in most schools. As a matter of fact, I've never had come across a school in the five that I've been in that does it quite like this. Um, they're, they're usually much more flexible and meetable to all students, and thereby students of poverty, who you often hear me talk about that issue, um, benefit tremendously without being identified as students of poverty because there's a social stigma for students, especially kids in high school. Um, they feel it. So I'd like you to consider that change. Um, then, you know, many of the things on, on the second page of 116, the guideline piece, is really just about rules and regulations of summer. So I don't know that that needs to be a policy driven piece as much as it should be driven. Um, by the high school and middle school administrative team to, to set the guidelines and structure of what happens in a summer school credit recovery model. Um, and that allows us to be flexible as the times change, we can change it without having a constant policy and guideline provision. Have you discussed this with um, curriculum instruction? We have. This, this, this originated there. Okay. Um, that this is and did they have a recommendation, or is it just in the infancy and you were um, conceptual? There's been dialogue around this a number of times, and I think, and this is why you've been at that mm -hmm. some of those meetings, that everybody understands the punitive nature of our current model. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, that some people were surprised, I think, like Mr. Speed, to find out that it kind of is this way, um, and that our students really are only eligible in summer school and have to go five years and things like that. So, in yeah. fact, this was one of our first conversations we had when we met 
when I found out, I said, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. Why are you, why is it so punitive where you're, you're almost forcing students to possibly drop out because they don't want to continue into the summer or into the following year to be a fifth year senior. And it's also enrichment. So it isn't just credit right, recovery. Right, He's right. not, we haven't said that yet, but there's also enrichment right. where additional courses and, and things can be offered during the school year instead of a study hall or, or something like that where there's opportunity for, and we discussed this not on here, but early college, other types of credit right. acquiring programs. So that, that's two parts to this. It's credit recovery and also enrichment. Using the Odyssey. Well, it could be a lot of things. I mean, originally yes. we could take, uh, um, Mr. Hatch brought up, you know, if you get out of the elementary level, when you want to start running enrichment programs after school, um, it could be any kind of enrichment okay. um, after school. Could, uh, previously, so that was then we ran old. reading recovery after school okay. during the school year. Um, didn't it wait for the summertime? Mm -hmm. um, so it would, it would encompass all of those opportunities. I'm just curious, what, other than math, what, what's the second largest number uh, of people well, in summer well, school? Usually English. English because students who um, you don't have to have four years of science, um, so kids if they fail science can recover it within the time in their senior year. Right. It, it tends to be language arts or English, but far and away math is the one. Far and away. I'm sensitive to that. Been there, done that, hundred years ago. And I think that over the course of you know my my daughter's times in the high school, I mean math math program at the high school has always been a. Um, Particular, I want to call weakness or area that needs improvement. Area for growth. Area for growth. Okay. Area for growth. Um, so, I mean, and we, we all knew, you know, that there's there's really good teachers and there's not so good teachers. And I think when I look at this, I mean, I think it's really good to have uh, to give a child hope that they could graduate on time with their peers. Right. Um, and I'd also be also interested to see what you know the identification and remediation that could be done if they're identified that they're in danger of failing before we get to this point how how we could look at that too and, and just as an aside and I know it's a little off the point but that, that's what our many of our benchmark pieces are about now we can see early earlier when students are beginning to deviate off the path and then put correctly instruction in place so some of that work is starting to happen yeah you know probably long overdue but we're beginning to move in that direction so okay. uh, well I think this is a good idea well, um, I think uh, it would be nice if Connor would be here. We could have uh, uh, discussed it, you know, from the policy yeah, side the and the curriculum. I think curriculum you guys committee. just take a look at it. But I think there's, I don't have a. Um, yeah. I think it's a good, it's a good concept to move forward with. I think this is the semantics of it, passing it through the policy. I think the curriculum committee is very much interested in moving forward. Okay, you've got other. Policies like this on your radar? I don't we know. We do. I, we have homework is next um, okay. that I'll be bringing forth. You know, one thing at a time, guys, but the, uh, the issue of homework and summer work um, has long been apparently an issue in the district. And to hear parents uh, of the kind of summer work, especially that our advanced kids are being done, it, it appears to be residing in quantity, not necessarily quality. Um, so there, there's more work to be done there in visiting that policy. I think, that, I think that's 119. That's why I have to bring. I don't like to bring you too much and just keep banging away. But, I could probably bring you one, you know, every every time we meet. Nice. Bring one, but well, at this are, point, I'm giving them to Mr. Harris. We're discussing them, free. and we're making some plans and, and to bring things forward. It's over. Much. I you know, that. Yeah, we have you know anything that you need to champion, yes. just <laughs> bring it forward, whether you over, over, uh, overwhelm us or, or not. Yeah, you know, no if we've already yeah, fit absolutely. in like a second meeting during sure. the month okay. uh, to to try and accommodate. Mr. Some. Harris and I have. Uh, we have a meeting, and there are many ideas that we are ready we to have, start rolling. A so. whole lot of plans. And you're, that you're both on the same page with. I spent the yeah, entire week at the high school. Yes, he did. Nice. Sitting in his office. For a good reason. I, with, for a good yeah, reason. I was in the principal's yes. office for a good week reason. Oh, yeah. we're, we're looking at, can I say sure, absolutely. We're looking at an early college program, partnering. Right. Good. That could probably start within about tomorrow, <laughs> if, if we yeah, can keep our way. We were supposed to have another meeting with Rack today, um, but she unfortunately was in the hospital with the bronchial piece. So, mm -hmm. Um, but, but what it looks like is there's a Pell opportunity out there for Pell Grants mm -hmm. to uh, fund, and they want to make us a model school. I've worked for about five months with Jody Corbett. Um, even though Mont was closer to us, we mm -hmm. have to, the, the way the state works, you must work with your, your county uh, community college. Right. So um, at this point, she wants to make us one of the models, and we'll be able to have students leave here in a STEM model, which is a big, you know, we've talked about these pathways for a long time. Right. Mr. Harris and I, uh, his idea is to champion more STEM as the first pathway. 
this will tie into the Pell piece, 30 credit students to be able to leave with. Mm -hmm. A lot of fantastic things that we should be able to deliver to you in November and the sound of that uh, to move forward for next year. I think the grant covered 26 credits per student. Right. I think it was 26 credits. So no charge. You would have, right. so you would be you almost a sophomore yes. when you left yes. high school. Our and this, big, our big and, push will be about transportation. You have to do 12 of the credits at rack. So it's like think of a low tech bus. We got to transport them two days a week. That's going to be something we have to work through and make a decision on how we're going to do that. But we have it sketched out in a model. It'll probably be a Tuesday, Thursday morning model. Take two classes their senior year, um, six credits in the fall, and then six credits uh, in the spring of their senior year. And then that would be the 12 you'd have to do on campus. In the meantime, most of our AP things, we've already looked at the alignment and uh, it's ready to. You'll go to the curriculum next and then come to the So, so if you recall, this, this model also exists, the relationship between the Career and Technology Center yeah. and RAC, mm -hmm. because they're, they're, those same type of credits are available to certain, you know, certain mm -hmm. disciplines over there. So it actually is something that, that, that is familiar. Yeah. Very exciting for our Very students. Exciting. So that's why this policy was so important, because right. it was to help bolster the students who were not at that math level yet, but while they're still in their school, in, in their grade, can still hit the top level math with some extra help. Right. And also the enrichment side, that's our term for early college, okay. and also STEM. So we're looking at getting the dropout rate down because less excuses, more help during the school year, because there are a lot of students sitting in study hall. Well, you know what, let's be productive yep. in study hall. and. Get, get it done then, and then partnering with the outside um, organization. And we're found, there's a lot of data to say that students who are not performing well at the high school level somehow really embrace the college model. It's weird, but, but it works because they're more interested in the freedom and the discussion, right. the type right. of college classes. Right. However, if you do poor in high school, a lot of times you don't right. get the chance to ex explore right. the college. Exactly. So this gives I them a little sample. I actually have one of those. Yeah, so, I, I have one of those. So this gives them the sample of what college life is like, right. and the credits under Pell, there's no charge. Nice. So it doesn't matter what, how much money you have in, 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 the, in your pocket, you can still get the Pell grant that I'm sure we all use some, at some point to take some credits and at least leave high school a strong freshman, right. a solid freshman. So then when you get to college. Like you said just for the exposure. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Additionally, you know, the last piece then just I like to always you know, preview you guys for where some of this is headed. Uh, you know, as long as the state continues with the Keystone piece, you know, we are starting to move towards this project-based assessment model. And we need to be able to now segue some of our summer school opportunity and money that we spend on summer school off of that and into project-based assessment pieces in the summer. So it's not an additional cost for the district, but you know, a cost-neutral right. uh, type piece. So right. all those things are in play right now. Um, you know, for us to continue to look at it and go down the line. And we'll offer your know, project-based assessment during the year as well, right? uh -huh. having both opportunities. Um, for the student who somehow got jammed up on the, on the keystones, and they're now in the projects but don't want to give up courses or want to stay in an early college model, right. because otherwise you'd have to take a class that we're doing the keystone support right now. Right. So all right. these pieces are you know, starting to, to fit in. All right. Very good. Great. Thank That's you very much, Mr. McKnight. Uh, we are joined by members of the public. Do you have any questions for Mr. McKnight on this? He touched on several things that I complained about. <laughs> and I will be at the school board meeting to bring it up again about how we need to improve the math program at Denver. And that's not a knock against you. It's again just bringing it from a public standpoint. Yeah. I, three three of my daughters all had the same complaint through that same school. So. I'm going to request, you know, in my thing about pulling data in regards to that. For the record, did you say your name? Yes, I'm sorry, my name is Lori Hope. Lori Hope. Okay, thank you very much. And for the record, data has been pulled, we're aware. It's about now finding the solution to improve that instruction. Of course, with what? I'm back to the data. The public, we have the data. We see who is performing it and not performing as well. And now it's about how do you grow that instruction that supports the students better that it has been, uh, it was, as you can imagine, when we walk into the classroom for an observation walkthrough, it's great. You know, I mean, we see it, like, unless you're sitting there every day. All day. So there, there's more to go, for sure. But we're, uh, we're in tune with it. We haven't solved it yet. 
Recognition of the problem is the first step to recover. <laughs> okay, um, Mrs. Bites and Mr. Speed, are you both comfortable with moving this forward um, as is, um, pending any type of review or change from the Curriculum Instruction Committee? I am. I am. Okay. Okay, then let's get into our work session for our PSBA policies. we we'll start at 006. Is there any, any questions? I did have um, a question today for uh, Mr. Small who, who gave me the answer I was looking for. Um, when it comes to on page five of eight, where it says voting, um, I didn't understand this. All voting on motions and resolutions shall be by voice. Uh, I, I'm sorry, that's not the point. That's not it. Um, okay, it's page six of eight, letter N. Excuse me, Mr. Wolf. Is yes. there an extra copy for the public to look at? Um, actually, do you want a copy to? I don't know which box it's on. We're just looking at a couple of policies. I mean, the, the it's it's zero, zero, 006. It's, yeah, it's not on the agenda. It's, it's, it is, it's uh, on is the it? agenda from policies zero, zero, 006 to 10 on the very, the very oh, top one. Oh, I see one. that. Okay. So you can have a well, set of comments. Okay. We'd be interested in the comments, too. Okay. And where was I? Back to... Uh, Page six of eight, N as in November, um, authorizing the transfer of unencumbered balances or portion thereof. That was something, that whole paragraph was added. And there's another uh, paragraph in here as well that was added um, because it is uh, by law. Oh, it's the, you need to have a two thirds majority, somewhere in here, is, you need a two thirds majority in order to do a budget transfer in the first three months of the uh, school year. Where is that? Uh, it is under voting. Um, a is an alpha. Oh, okay. And it had, you know, unfortunately when you look at, it, it bracketed these numbers, which in, in a hyperlink to a live document, it would transfer to the uh, associated school code, but we can't, we don't get that. So I asked why that was, and, and he did he did say that is that is uh, school code, as is the other one, um, uh, N on the back. That was added to our policy to comply with school code. But beyond that, I had um, I had no other changes or um, concerns except for when we get to committee meetings. The le this is the very last page. Um, a majority of the total membership of a committee show uh, constitute a quorum. So we would make sure that it's always got to be at least three um, of uh, members that would that would be here. Um, so if we were going to change that, now would be the time to change that. But I couldn't see any any other changes unless there was something that struck either of you. Did you, Mr. Harris? Did you have anything? Okay. Mr. Speed, did you have any comments or concerns as the, as is? Um, no, sir. Mrs. Bites, are you comfortable moving this forward? Oh, I, I did have a question. Uh, I saw that planned instruction, adopting planned instruction. Oh, is it safe to assume that that's the Where, line? What page are you Oh, in? I'm sorry. Uh, J of 2. 2J. Two two. Is that... Um, if we had the link, is that something that it links to to, dis to define? I'm not um, familiar with that term. Is that a standard um, education term, Mr. Harris? Or you? Is that we would need to go. We, we would need to go to the link 
to be sure. Yeah, is that, you think that's covered in the link? Yes. And I'm fine with that. I would just want it defined to the Muslim. I don't know if that's like the lesson plans of the, the teachers. And that was, this was one of the you know weaknesses of reviewing them like this. We can't, and nor do I want to have the ability to go onto the live document and be able to edit it, which is the only way you can see these um, these references. Um, you know, right now Mrs. Kiki and Mrs. Uh, uh, Kramer are the only two that I'm aware of that are, are permitted to do it, and uh, I didn't want to have that responsibility of of making a mistake and having it be mine. Well, that's something I just want to be sure that the. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Um, as a as a takeaway, could you have um, Mrs. Kiki provide the committee with the what the hyperlink where what uh, school code references 20 and 28 are, and we would move it forward pending any uh, anything. We can we can always pull it if there's something in there that concerns us. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there's a concern. I just yeah. Okay, so you're both. Uh, for, I wouldn't want move. the board to have to prove teachers' lesson plans or something like that. I doubt that that's a good sign. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Now, 006.1 should look familiar because we just reviewed it. Um, and at that time, we were not going to make any changes. Um, and Mr. Uh, Kurtz was in agreement with that, that we would keep it as it is. Um, the only question I had, and, and I would recommend the deletion of, um, of the second paragraph, a board member shall be able to attend a board meeting and participate in the board deliberations and voting through electronic communications, but only under extraordinary circumstances, and replace that with the original language uh, that we had in this in this policy. Um, it is further, which currently states, it is further intent of this policy that the authorized procedures are to be used in the event of emergencies or other compelling circumstances which require a board member to be physically absent from the meeting. The board shall rely on its discretion, good judgment, and integrity of its members to ensure that the procedures as authorized in this policy will not be abused or misused. I like that, I like that paragraph better than this. The only thing is, again, I think we have to see that hyperlink because that might be the language right out of the state code. Right and if it says extraordinary circumstances, then I would want to be consistent with the code the way it's written. All right. Good comment. Personally. No. Is there any other uh, concerns or changes to this policy other than, than that? So we're basically we're talking about extraordinary if you look circumstances. At, yeah, yeah, if you look at uh, the green, the, these green sheets are the current policy. Right. Um, Sandy gave us uh, the current policy in green. It'll show you the wording that I'm referring to. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Because that was changed to include that, and they've taken it out and replaced this. So. so what we'll what we can do, um, we can table this until we get that hyperlink uh, um, explanation. Are you comfortable with reinserting back the original wording for that paragraph? Um, Where is that on the I'd really like market? to see the way it's written. Yeah. I have if you, um, that should be 006.1. I got it, but what is it? Under what, uh, one, it's right in the first page, second. the second paragraph. It starts with, it okay. is further intent. Mrs. Bites, do you not have a copy? I can give you mine. I guess it's, it's really kind of broad. It's, it's saying, essentially what it's saying is that 
you can fill a conference in if it's an emergency or a compelling circumstance. Am I, am I boiling that down right? So that's really, you're, you know, the part that I like about this is the board shall rely on the discretion, good judgment, integrity of its members. Right. You know, because there may be someone you, you have in this position who is not um, not motivated to be here, and that's a totally different circumstance than maybe using Mr. Kurtz, for example, who who, who does a lot of the work in the background, would like to have been here tonight, uh, was not feeling well, um, or when he's at school, and uh, but he is doing all the background work and participation. So. I'm fine inserting that. <clears throat> Mrs. Bites? We can, uh, we're going to have, this is going to come back again. Yeah, I'm not ready to jump on that. I okay. Actually, then what we'll, 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 we'll do, we'll table this. We'll table 006.1. Because uh, my thinking is the opposite. Okay, you know, what if we have someone who's not a Mr. Kurtz, he's not doing his homework, or we set ourselves up to rely on his good judgment to not get it here? No, but that's what it says. It says we're relying on the board member to be uh, the, the discretion of the judgment and integrity of its members to ensure that the procedure as authorized will not be case or misused. Okay. I, I, All right. No, I, we we Let's have. Then we'll uh, reconvene this uh, next. Well, whenever the next committee member uh, committee member uh, are assigned to this group next next month. All right. Mm -hmm. Moving on to 007, policy manual access. Um, did find out that we actually do have a hard copy here. Check to make sure that the girls, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Kiki did respond that they do have a hard copy here in the building. If anybody would, would instead of going online and looking at our policies, would rather come in and read it, there is a hard copy here. I had a question about that. Mr. Harris, maybe you could clarify this. I find myself often wishing I had an area to come over to here at the main office and look at the policy manual or um, the legal handbook for school direct, for school boards, directors, or some back minutes or something. Is it um, common or would it be uh, re reasonable to have a little section of someone's office for a board, like a board reference library? Or would you like a board office? I'm used to having a board office. Really? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I wouldn't want to, um, I don't know that it's necessary to give us but some sort of space where we can go and, and look at all the documents and look maybe past uh, budgets, finance reports, and get a little a reference area that we can sit down and come through these things, including the policy manual. Is that something you could yeah. think about? And the thing now, everything's electronic. So and I get that. Th th there would be a laptop or a computer sitting on the desk, but we could have access for any board member to come in a, a, a workspace. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Is that That's something that? We, and you said you've heard about or yeah. you've uh, had board, yeah. offices board offices mm -hmm. that would actually have reference documents. Mm -hmm. yeah. For instance, we got a manual when we went to our board training from PASPA. We, we got a, ma a manual. Why can't one, so we each have got a manual, you know, have a, one copy of that manual there for quick reference if we're in the middle of an executive session and we want to do a quick, you know, check on something we heard at a at training. We could actually build it as we go. Exactly. We could build it exactly. as we go, but I, yes. That would be no, great. No problem yeah. having a space to sit down and if, you, if you're in the area, come in and get some work done. No, that's that's great. no problem. That would be great. I, would, I mean, a, an office sounds great, but I, I wouldn't, you know, there's not office space available for us. We can just sit in the corner somewhere or something. Yeah. I'm not yeah. asking for special treatment. We can make space for you. Great. So then my question is, should this uh, policy say that the policy should be kept in the board's library? Well, here's let me, let me jump in here just real quick. We're, we're under the second paragraph. The board policy manual should be considered a public record. A, a copy of the policy manual shall be, and I wouldn't do insert, available from the district website and a hard copy maintained in the administration office okay. because that's we want to keep all our policies yeah. well we're migrating as you know to psba that yeah. they're all going to exist electronically yeah. 
Um, so I wanted to I wanted that to make that one like trend, one change. Good, right? And then again, I don't want to rely, I guess my call on the library is I don't want to have to rely on tracking down a certain person here so that I can get access to, which is the way it's at now. If I want to come over and look at some, I have to get in touch with this person, this person, or this person. And no. go through a, a nice reference room makes sense. And I know about yeah. access. Oh, that's That'd be great. Public comment? Um, I just, from a public perspective, and I know that they're on is online, I can't find it. Um, there are so many policy numbers and policies out there. I've tried to search for certain policies online, and it's very difficult sometimes to do on our website. Mm -hmm. So if there was an index that I could go to that says that this, this policy area covers a little yeah. description or something, so it would make it easier to look stuff, because I've, I've literally spent an hour before yep. going through yeah, policy and reading, online. trying to find We're, something uh, that pertains for, you, for your benefit, just we're and actually. In agreement to what she said, yeah. I have called and asked, and I go through different yeah. people to try and find where I'm supposed to be going to look for that policy because we had a lot of administrative changeover, yeah. and they're still learning the policy. Yeah. So the expertise you still with so know it either. So. Right. We're actually in the midst of transitioning our policies hosted on our website to. An, the, uh, an alternate website that will allow you know the public to get in there and and see this see these um, these policies and the act the links will be active so you could see that it'll jump to okay. the hyperlink will jump to whatever the reference school code is um, so we're the this group that we're what well, we reviewed before this is now in first reading has to go through another reading, and then those will appear on that website. Or they're really the we're, we're just in the, starting the middle of that conversion process. Okay. That's what we're because right, it, it is kind of brutal to go they're through brutal. it right now. They're going to be searchable. They're going to be hosted on another site. So you'll just click on the link and it's there. And not just the titles will appear on one, you know, in a much smaller area. You'll be able to. Look, I think you'll find them a lot. You can I, I just the feel alert, right? Yeah. That feature. I'm more of a, within any of our documents. I'm more of looking at something about being proactive, and I think that when the information is there and it allows the public yes. to look it up, yes. it alleviates a lot yes. of the controversy yes. that goes on when that's available. And there is a methodology with all, how the how the policies are laid out. Zero, the zero zero section is all board related. Um, you know the you know they're, they're this. I think the next one is 100, which is the um, curriculum. Two is the students. 200. Series. I mean, there is a 900 is 900 is buildings. 700 is finance. Okay. Yeah, there. So there is there is a method to the madness. But you're right. There maybe we could put a key up there to. Sh all right, if you're looking for, depending on what you should yes. know, right. say you're we looking for. Sure yeah, say you're looking for yeah. building. Well, then you know it's somewhere in the 900s, and it makes. Cut your search down a little bit. So. And I think there is actually a, uh, I, I could be wrong, but I think there is actually a, a, a sheet on the on the website that does break it down as far as what. Just find it. Yeah. <laughs> and it is going to be a little you'll, you'll difficult. Like a lot better when we're done this conversion, right. I assure you. Okay. Yeah, the search engine for the PSBA site will be very strong, be you know, very robust, so it helps you out when you're looking for something like. This is Byte said. You can search for a particular word, and it'll show you where that word appears in the policies. So if you see bullying, it'll, yeah. here's all the ones that you know. Here's all the policy as it pertains to bullying. But if you want to look right now, take this, take it from someone who's new. <laughs> Go to the little magnifying glass. Type in policy. Well, I've done that. It, it gives you that, <laughs> and then there's about four options, and one of them is that index sheet. Okay. Uh, you, you go to the. <laughs> yeah. And then Good. click on the heading with the numbers that, that he's saying, and then they all come up and then scroll down, and you'll see all of this. That's helpful. So, yeah, you click on the heading and just kind of scroll. I'll try that. <laughs> and then control F <laughs> and put your keyword oh. in. And then well, your finger. Click your heels three times. Then control F and keyword, and then you'll find it. Okay, so. Um, this is bites. So Were you okay with the inserting of that? Uh, hard copy, like uh, yeah. Okay.
I'll, I'll give I'll give this uh, to Mrs. Kiki and then copy you so you know what this is. All right. Uh, so we are going to move 007 as amended. Okay, 008, ethics and conflict of interest. I had lots of changes in here. I went, I went through, went through the existing policy to find all the changes uh, because you get a list here from that we got from PSBA, and they said they deleted, but they you can't see what they deleted. They deleted. Right. Um, so I, I went through and and there were really the first page uh, there were no changes. It was exactly the same as our. Uh, really? Constant policy, public employee, employees, and public officials. That 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 wording was the same. Um, under where it says authority, that in our old policy was statement of district policy. That's what that used to say. So they changed that to authority. I don't know why, but the no public official. Uh, that there was no change until we get down to. Um, each member, uh, which is the third paragraph from the bottom, they member of the board. They added that. There was I don't know what their they language. Added that? Well, we always well did they, that. they called it the school board before. Now they're just calling us the board. So that was changed. Oh. It deleted language related to a quorum, and I understand why. If you looked at. When in their comments, um, they deleted it because it was that that part of uh, the language was referred to in another policy, so it became you know a duplicate. So they took it out. Uh, for whatever reason, May one was always instead of a preceding calendar year, we had May one in our policy uh, in that same sentence. Uh, you're still in that same each member? yeah each member at the very end as the preceding calendar year yeah. there must have been the reference of May in there you look at the existing existing policy uh, the next the next paragraph um, in accordance with law at the very bottom in accordance with law and board policy they they added that with the reference numbers and then underneath it underneath I have uh, they've removed a three paragraphs from the original policy a B and C so they made some substantial changes and I have to see if I can find where that was. Probably summed it all up with uh, an appearance of law and board policy. Meaning that there are times when a board member can be paid if they're being paid, repaid for uh, uh, travel expenses or something. I'm guessing, right? My recollection that was changes that were, were duplicated somewhere else. It was a uh, Yeah, I have. They also took out who to file that statement of financial interest with. The original policy says to be filed. Uh, State Ethics Commission, no later than May 1. Well, what is... Because um, we don't really file it with the Ethics Commission. We file it with the school district. Right, right. now, I don't know what Mrs. So Kramer does with them. So that's better. I'm just saying I think that's better. Anyway. Maybe she forwards them on. I'm sure she does. Do you, do you know Mr. Harris? Would they have to be forwarded on to the state. 
Okay, so she, so, she, so maybe she just collects them from us and then sends them in so as one like big package. So it's like going into a guideline. You know, yes, we have to file with the school. Yeah, there's eight. Stuck to seven. You're right, Mr. Speed. I knew I seen it. Yeah, they took out, if you look at the page three or four, that bottom entire paragraph A, and on the next page, B and C, which yeah. board member may be appointed to the position of board secretary. Well, because these are all references to uh, different policies already. So this is stu oh, duplicate oh, okay. language. Okay, perfect. And we did want them out of here. Right. Uh, so beyond, beyond those changes of re removing duplicate language, there are n no other changes. <laughs> Well, then I say we move on it because we already revamped this one. Yes. I'm so sorry. No. Um, so is there another policy in regards to ethics and conflict of interest for volunteers that aren't necessarily employee of the district, but um, run a their coach, let's say, of a sporting team or volunteering for a club or anything like that? Is there a separate policy that they fall under? Like, we're only in the 000s, which are board policies. Okay, so yeah. that's yeah. in the 900s. Yeah, there's another little section for that. Oh, yeah. It's a whole section. 914. And, and we appreciate you to look at that and give access if you think that. Okay. We, we just got done with that, 914. Just, there you go, yeah. <laughs> we just got done with that. There were some, change, yeah, there were some changes that we, that we were making to volunteer policy to make it easy for, easier for people to come into our schools, get the background checks that only the, you would need um, if they're going to have an opportunity to be alone with the children. Right. But state law has changed, has changed so much over the last three months or since August. Um, so, you know, we wanted to go back and revise that policy going forward so the building administrators had the current policy. Okay. You did get that, Mr. Miller, didn't you? Thank you. Revised the volunteer policy? Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm fine with this policy then. If there, there's a so you're, Mr. Speed, are you I'm okay? Fine with that. So we are moving 008 to first reading. There's no penalty for finishing on time, or ahead of time, I should say. But is there a reward? I'll give you an attaboy. Satisfaction. Okay. Um, policy 009, policy development. They made no changes to the policy to carbon copy from what we had before. Really? Yeah. See, the, the only thing they put down here in the bottom under number one was policy. Some shells versus wills. Yeah, I guess they have to justify the cost to yeah. add some things yeah. in here. But at least there's some school code references in here now. There's that number one again. Um, the second the second page, number three. Um, adoption of policy must be made by the majority of the vote at the very end. That's that sub sub note number one. Remember, we had asked for a printout of what that school code. Oh, yeah, reference yeah. actually was, so it's, it's there again. Is there any comments or? I'm okay with this. I'm okay with it. All right, we're going to move 009 to first reading. The goal was to try and get a clean slate for whoever would be the policy chair next next time around, if it's not me. All right. Um, now, the, the last policy that we're, we're going to review was in our current system, 010. They eliminated 010, and they renumbered it to 011. Do you know why? Just 
it may, might be consistent with what that policy is across okay. PSBA. I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, now we had we had made some changes before to this policy, um, and for whatever reason they they weren't incorporated into this policy. Um, and here's what I found from it's actually if you look at the if you actually look at this zero one zero policy, this was kind of the work product that we were going by, and I'm not sure why this never got updated, but in any event. Um, on 1A is an alpha promoting, and it says public education. We, we just remove public and just, you know, promoting education because that's, whether it's public or private, you're, you're promoting education. Yeah, and they so, put it back in. You know, um, wow. Yeah, they put, it, they put it back in. I don't know, I don't understand it. Because some of our kids get private education. If they have an IEP. I yeah, I, I, I don't have an explanation. Um, the other change that I saw under 2A is an alpha. Um, staying current with changing needs and requirements um, to make an informed decision. So the last four words of that paragraph um, were moved up. Everything in between from requirements to, to make informed decisions were removed. We had marked for deletion, so we're taking out by reviewing educational literature, attending professional development opportunities prior to board service and continuously during board service. We just don't do that in, 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 uh, in actuality. So if we're not doing it, it shouldn't be in our policy. So it was marked for deletion before and it wound its way back in here. So my recommendation would be to take it out. Now, I didn't see anything else in this policy that was different from the original policy, unless any, either one of you have a concern. I do oh, not. We talked about D2 before, uh, 2D. Oh, yes. Adopting and acting in accordance with the PASLA code of conduct. Yeah. Remember, I had it marked for deletion. Yeah. I did I did have that marked for didn't deletion. Think that we should be right. that beholden to to the trade group, right? Is that your recollection? No, I don't recall that so well. I think that was our thinking though, right? Why we struck it. Mm -hmm. But we should I don't want to strike you and say that there aren't code of conduct, that we're not following the code of conduct. Something with the PASMA. You're right, though. There was. We didn't want to. That, that almost sounds like we have to always be PASMA members, and we think the board wants the liberty to not. You know, if we don't want to pay the eleven thousand dollars on any one given year, we don't. We don't want to join. And then it's a, like a contradiction there. So I think there's a code of conduct in state. In the state code, so we should just reference. There it has to be. I don't know if it's actually called a code of conduct. Or, oh, how about we let <coughs> Mr. Harris make a recommendation on that? Because I don't really want to strike saying we're not going to subscribe to a code of conduct, the industry standard. But I'm confused, I'm concerned about the language of referencing exactly past this code of conduct. Let, let me look into this because I'm more aligned to saying we would use it as a, to help us establish guidelines. Guidelines versus a... Follow, adopt and acting in accordance with. I would more say we're going to use it, use the PAT, PASBA Code of Conduct for members of, as a guide to establishing. Well, that's, that's a good point. Well, we can that's come up with that wording right now. We have yeah. 15 minutes. Okay. Certainly come up with some language in the next 15 minutes and we can guideline that would, uh, not con that would not conflict with uh, what? No, I think the way Mr. Harris expressed it yeah, was as a guideline. use, use, the use their code of conduct as a guideline for... As opposed to adopting and, act and acting. It's that's strong and hard. Or it could be used... Uh, you, but you'd be using guidelines to adopt and act in the court. Oh, yeah, I, just, 
I had it in my head the first time. You could play it back. <laughs> I could. <laughs> wow, I sounded really smart the first time. I want to say it's critical, but I don't know if it's... Utilize password code of conduct as a guideline. There you go. That's it. Short and simple. What, something, the PSB code of conduct for members of Pennsylvania School Board will be used as a, a, guide. as a guideline? As a guideline. For... Just, okay. Sure. So we're going to take out adopting and acting in accordance with, and then make the capitalized the PSB code of conduct for members of Pennsylvania school boards as a guideline. No, we'll we'll be used as will be used as a guideline. Okay, there's there's a lot of problems here too. Participating in annual board retreats. I don't think we should force ourselves to do that. That's not always practical. There's cost well, I think the answer right. I had that was I had that scratched out. Unless we're going to call it our seems like our board retreat happens to be um, executive session, yeah. but. As, um, as much as possible. Because as, I don't as, do as needed. As needed. I mean, I do incur. I believe we should do annual board retreats. I, I really do. For, for training or uh, because here's what, what I was thinking. I, I was I think it would be helpful going forward that that we would have an administrator or someone in, in the administration come forward and explain to us. Here's what I do and how it fits into the big puzzle. Yeah. OK. Because, you know, Ms. Mikowski, of course, we know she does a special education. We know right. Dane Miller is, you know, principal. Well, right. Dane does a, he, he does a, a schedule. I don't know how the schedule goes to go. I'd like to know, like, the scheduling, scheduling 101, if you want to call it that, you know, to get an understanding. So, you know, when, when somebody's talking to us, yep. and that, that would be like a board retreat, you know, more or less. But it would be board training. Exactly. Where the board gets a little bit more exposure uh, to, to what the responsibilities are and duties of the sure. administration. But Mr. Harris would probably have themes. And yeah, just take like one a month or <coughs> one a month or something like that, and over the course of or a year, be, you're going to get to. I was thinking to a year. Yeah. Oh, oh, because yeah. there's certain times of yeah. the school. Well, there's certain times of the year where the school is really busy, and on yes. our side, we're not. So start up. So going into the, the fall, yeah. then after the big holidays, they're very busy, and then wrapping up at the end of the year. So there's a time right around this time of the year where it could be done, and then maybe around spring break, April, it could be done. After that, mm -hmm. it's assessments, it's shutting down into the year. So there's startup, it's August, September, then coming back after Christmas, and then at the end of the year. So you can't do it then. Perfect. Right. Put on a schedule? Yeah. I'm just the problem with Yeah. So twice a year would be a good and to get off campus someplace or even in here. Yeah, I, I was done. thinking more, you know, that you would just uh, we would carve out some time at the committee of the whole and have somebody just give us a little presentation. It doesn't no, not with PowerPoints and so forth, just like, you know, an overview of what they do in their in their daily what their responsibilities, what they do, um, you know, maybe take fifteen, twenty minutes to give you a flavor uh, of what yeah. the administrator does and, and how it fits in with the overall. And, and if maybe you have a, little, a better idea, of maybe something more uh, comprehensive. That, that was just an idea I had. Yeah. Uh, I, I think we could wait for Mr. Harris to bring those mm -hmm. ideas okay. to us. And for the sake of the, um, the policy tonight, though, I would just, I wouldn't want to strap us like this. Like, models, responsible, Governance and leadership by participating in annual board retreats. I, I that we have to change that a little bit. As as, as you know, we, as necessary. As, as necessary. necessary. As so leave it as a, so participating in annual board retreats as necessary. Because it doesn't doesn't say all. 
What's that? It doesn't say all. All. So that's one thing. So you don't want it to say all. But, all where? Well, it does not say all. If it said all, then that means it's mandatory. You have to be at all of them. But it could be, like you say, if you end it with as needed. Necessary. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's good then. I'm happy with that if we can just throw that in. So you're, are you comfortable with moving um, 011, Mr. Speed and Mrs. Bites? I am. Yes. <coughs> As amended. Any public comment? <coughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> Policy is always exciting. <laughs> what did we decide to do about public? Are we striking that word public education in yes. May? Yes. Yeah. Educations, whether it's it's important to have education, whether it's public or private, or homeschool, whatever it's. Or or school. Yeah. Right. Um, now, how does this work? Will the uh, pass the look at what we're striking one more time? And, um, and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Like, Kiki will make the changes, and then they'll they'll look at them one more time and and say you really shouldn't do that if we're making. No, it. no, they're not going to look at it anymore after we look right. at it. If there's a if there's a reason to do so, if we change the language, that maybe we would have uh, Fox Rothschild oh, look that's through true. it. They're doing that. um, but yeah, there's okay. no reason to send it back to PSBA. It's it's going to sit there for a long time before we get it back. Okay. Okay. Um, at this point, since we're reorganizing in uh, December, I I'm not going to. Uh, um, recommend that we have another policy meeting meeting in December. Um, whoever the the committee chair would be at that point can make a decision if we want to try to get a um, if another meeting should be held with the members in December. Um, so, with that, is there any other questions? Oh, I just had um, O O O in front of me or O O three. What, a sec just just here for a second reading. Is that the agenda for tonight? Is that on the agenda? Yeah, yes, it's on the. That's for the for the cow. Is that for the cow? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can still make changes to these um, policies if we if we need to. So between the first and second reading, as long as they're not major major changes. Okay. Now we did Great. have for policy zero zero three. Um, evaluation of board procedures. If you look at the bottom, that was the concern Mr. Basil had raised, that we had taken it out. That was a mistake on my part. I think I missed out of my notes to Mrs. Kiki, and she didn't take it out for the first reading. I gave her those instructions to take it out for, for you know, going forward. So it is different than what you, what this printed copy is. That, that's for discussion later tonight, right? That wasn't for discussion today. It's, they, we don't really need to discuss it anymore unless there's some changes that we would like to make to it. Are there changes you would like to make to it? No, I just want to do a comparison. Before. Okay. But, but yeah, we, can, we, can always, we can always pull it at any time and, you know, um, before it goes to the next reading. Yeah, I mean, it looks like wordage. It's familiar to me. I just haven't had a chance to read that. Okay. Any, yeah. Anything else? Any public comment? No. Okay, then we'll uh, um, conclude the meeting at 7.07. Good job.